Welcome to our presentation on standardizing audiology assistant training. The three biggest issues regarding audiology assistants is that they have no standardized education, no standardized training, and no standardized license. A brief history outlining audiology assistant training. 1997, AAA had a position statement on support personnel in the field of audiology and acknowledged the need for audiology assistance in a clinical setting. Between 1996 and 2004, the amount of audiology support personnel in the VA healthcare system increased by 619%. 2010, AAA released their task force, which outlined what audiology assistants can and can't do clinically. 2011, ASHA Associates program was launched for audiology assistants to receive credentials. 2015, ASHA officially decided to continue utilizing the Associates program for audiology assistants and speech language pathology assistants. Non-traditionally trained audiology assistants in the VA healthcare system have been assigned responsibilities within their scope of practice that other clinics would consider risky. According to HHTM's article, A Case for the Enhanced Audiology Assistant, the VA has incorporated audiology assistants in a way that makes the clinic more streamlined and efficient. In the VA, audiology assistants are responsible for tasks such as cerumen removal, ear mold impressions, repairing hearing aids, and assistive listening devices. While these procedures may seem risky and are prohibitive responsibilities for audiology assistants in certain states, the VA feels that it improves clinical efficiency by up to 50%. If the patient is having a relatively minor problem, the audiology assistant can see the patient without the audiologist having to add the patient to their schedule, according to HHTM 2014. VA audiologists are able to see more patients throughout their day because of this structure. According to Andrews, OTC hearing aids and audiology assistants, the future is now. Properly trained audiology assistants allow audio audiologists to see more patients throughout the day. The article explains that over the years, the field of audiology has vehemently denied a place for audiology assistants in the clinic. It isn't until recent years that there have been efforts made to standardize audiology assistant training and certification. The primary reasons audiology assistants are going to become more prevalent in the future are time constraints, declining reimbursements from insurance companies, and an overall shortage of audiologists to see patients. On this slide, we can see the audiology task force that was outlined by AAA in 2010. Here are some of the problems that it causes. Are standards of patient care being hindered by the lack of standardization in education, training, and licensure in audiology assistance? The statement on the slide suggests that if an audiology assistant were to move from one audiologist's practice to another, a difference in job duties between practices is likely. Although some site-specific training is expected in any profession, duties can vary greatly in assistance based on clinic needs. For example, more administrative duties may be required at one clinic, whereas at another clinic, the assistant could be in charge of hearing aid cleaning and checks exclusively. Training would be required for each office, which requires time, effort, and money to be spent on training. ASHA offers best practice guidelines for audiology assistants which rely heavily on the duties and skills of the audiologist and their ability to train and manage the assistant. The following guidelines for audiology assistants can be found on ASHA's website. These are best practice guidelines presented by ASHA. They are suggestions. They are not required to be followed, though they are highly recommended. 
Due to the lack of regulation by a governing body, audiologists are relying on good faith in our fellow audiologists and their ability to train an audiology assistant. Audiologists are required to have a master's doctorate degree and a state license with optional certifications from ASHA and or AAA. Should the system be similar for our assistants? What are other health professions doing? Dental assistants are required to have at least an associate's degree or similar clinical education requirements to complete tasks beyond general office work. Secondary certif certificates can be needed in other areas, such as radiography, in order to obtain a state license in dental assisting. Certification is offered through the American Dental Association. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics Mean Annual Wage, for this occupation, is $39,770. Physical therapy assistants also require at least an associate's degree, as well as completion and passing of a national licensure exam. Certifications are also offered. Their annual wage is $57,620. Similar to audiology assistants, optometry assistants go by many names. Education and training requirements are similar to our assistance as well. However, standardized certification is offered through the American Optometry Association with workbooks, exams, and other activities required to obtain certification. Varied levels of certification are offered based on job duties. The mean annual wage for optometry technicians is $37,500. Our sister profession surveyed SLPs who supervise speech-language pathology assistants. They found participants supervised one to four SLIPAs, mainly in a school setting. SLIPAs were mostly engaged in tasks in the area of service delivery and administrative support rarely in duties related to prevention and advocacy. The majority of participants indicated that SLIPAs had a positive impact on the field. The greatest perceived advantage of SLIPAs was related to assistance with caseload-related tasks, with the greatest perceived disadvantage related to the potential for misuse of SLIPAs. Participants recommended several areas of suggested supervisor training critical elements in SLIPA training, and needed ASHA resources. To summarize, the Bureau of Labor Statistics does not offer information about audiology assistants, aka audiology technicians. Payscale.com reports that our assistants make an average salary of $38,211 annually. We require assistants to have a GED, or high school diploma with training as specified by the audiologist. Licensure and certifications are not required for the assistants to practice. How can we fix the problem? By demanding an audiology associate's degree be necessary, it demands everyone have a standardized form of training. It also requires pursuing a higher level of education than a high school diploma which implies greater dedication to the field. This option would be a good choice for people to pursue immediately following high school or for people who are not currently connected to an audiology practice. Upon graduation from the Associates Program, you can apply for a position in any clinic requiring only site-specific training on protocols and office flow. Courses in the program would provide fundamental skills and knowledge that can be used to effectively and efficiently support audiologists. Certification programs would contain the same content as would be received in the Associates Program, but would require the supervision of an audiologist in order to begin and complete the certification. Dr. Kingham has a training program as well as Nova Southeastern University. On this slide, we have a sample of Dr. Kingham's course. If you've not heard of Dr. Kingham,
She was awarded her master's degree in audiology at the University of Washington and obtained her clinical doctorate from A.T. Still University. She was awarded the Future Leaders in Audiology Award in 2012 and is past president of Washington State Audiology Academy. She is the current member of AAA Audiology Assistant Subcommittee. Please visit this website to learn more about Dr. Kingham's program. Nova Southeastern University has an accredited audiology program and also an audiology assistant training program. Their course is also online and requires supervision of an audiologist. NSU's program has two separate courses, Amplification and Diagnostics. A licensed audiologist is required for supervision of this. Even though this program is offered through an accredited audiology university, this is not a degree granting course and no college credit is received. Please visit the website to learn more about their program. According to ASHA's state support personal information, there is a lot of variation in the amount of education required by each state for audiology assistance. Only 10 of 50 states require audiology assistants to have education beyond high school, and less than half of the states in the United States require continuing education. To implement our solution of a more unified training program, there would need to be a change in state requirements, either a unified requirement across the U.S. or a national licensing system similar to our AUD requirements. Is the cost of attending a university to obtain an associate's degree or a credential program worth it for audiology assistance? This would depend on the cost of the education obtained and potential earnings. According to the National Center for Education Statistics, for the 2015-16 school year, it cost an average of $10,432 per year at a two-year college and $26,120 per year at a four-year university. These costs include an estimated room and board, but does not include other living expenses. Using an audiology assistant's average salary, of $38,211, the payments for a two-year university would be under 10% of their monthly income. So in that situation, they could make additional principal payments, allowing them to pay off their loan more quickly and with less interest, while the payments for a four-year university would be about 20% of their monthly income, and this might cause some financial strain. Thank you for listening. These are our references. Have a great day. Thank you.